Hello and welcome to The Conversation, the second edition in our first week coming back since January began. I'm Simusisi Wenyanda and this week we're talking about Isabel Dos Santos. If you don't know her, she's an Angolan and she's the richest woman in Africa. She also happens to be the former first daughter of the country and she's been fighting off criminal allegations and is vying for the role of president. Well, we'll see if that's going to happen. But anyway, today we take a deeper look at the story behind the woman. Um, the conversation starts now. As usual, we know on the conversation we have colleagues and experts joining us. Today is no different. I'm joined by Ugo Chuku Ekiako, who's a political analyst, and Esther Nwanko, who's a legal professional. Thank you for joining me. Thank you so much. And I did not butcher your name. <laughs> <laughs> I tried not to, right? I'm so looking forward to having this conversation. It's been trending on social media, mm -hmm. and we've, I mean, there was a robust engagement that happened in the newsroom this morning as I was preparing for the show, so I can't wait. But let's start with an introduction briefly. The 46-year-old uh, Isabel Dos Santos is the eldest daughter of former long-standing Angolan President Jose Eduardo Dos Santos. She's an entrepreneur and a graduate of King's College in London and she was listed by Forbes as the richest woman in Africa and the 13th richest person on the continent. Her current net worth is $2.1 billion. But she was unceremoniously removed as the head of Angola's gas parastatal Sonangol in 2017 by the new president um, and she's also since been issued an order for the freezing of her assets and stakes in Angolan companies as part of a suit that's related to money she allegedly owes the state firm. Now, earlier this week, the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists, the ICIJ, released a damning report that they titled the Luanda Leaks, and they claim they have over 715,000 documents that point to hundreds of millions of dollars that she siphoned out of Angola. Now, in response, she's been speaking to the media and in public using social media in an attempt to clear her name and she says all these allegations are part of a greater ploy to discredit her father and of course her family by extension but before we get into that let's take a look at this report by the icij take a look at this straight attack by the current government that is completely politically motivated my holdings are commercial there are no proceeds from uh, contracts or public contracts or money that has been deviated from public funds Okay, so that's what she says in response. Uh, the allegations from the ICIJ, uh, over 715 documents, 15,000 documents that they say they have. Over 100 um, journalists have gone into um, putting this report together about her. And it spans over 20 years, um, essentially, uh, the, the rot, the deep rot of what has been happening in Angola. But she insists um, that she is innocent. Um, she's been in supposed exile for the past year, moving between London and Dubai, mm -hmm. um, where they have properties and businesses. Um, but she's adamant that her fa family is a victim of uh, politicking, essentially. She says that the government uh, of the day right now is uh, essentially manipulating the ICIJ, and that's really what this all is. What do you make of it, Esther? Okay, I'm, I'm going to say, first of all, I like the fact that Ugo smiled okay. when you <laughs> said her family, you know, was being... Uh, accused wrongly but then let's 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 check the history of Angola this is a nation that virtually has existed if we are not wrong for over 20 years for the list and then in that time of existence how much of good have they enjoyed from the government and then also we will have to check the fact that for example we're in Nigeria I'm Nigerian all right Nigeria has existed now this year, 1st of October, will make us 60 years. I will tell you something. When the government started, there was history of good that the people enjoyed from the government, mm. which is why in my time today, people come out and say, Nigeria is not the way it used to be. But you see, the Angolans do not have that record from, you know, political roots to deep root corruption practices that has happened there. We're talking of even investments made in the name of the people that would later be put in pockets, allegedly, of, you know, po political participators of their own country. Many Angolans today have never had so much to record that, okay, this is what I have enjoyed from the government. This is what my father enjoyed from the government. That's a valid this point. This is what my grandfather enjoyed from the government. In Nigeria here, my dad went to school, my dad went to IMT and finished school, got his HND and was given a 504. Pojo. Yeah. 
My father enjoyed that. My father enjoyed some business capital from government as a graduate. But guess what? No Angolan from inception till now can brag about that. Now, this is a country that had enough money to invest in the building of Dubai. Are you aware? As a city today in the U United Arab Emirates, they invested greatly. Nigeria did not. But then at the end of the day, aside their people having, you know, easy entry into Dubai, what else? It's you had so much money to invest, you had millions of dollars to invest, and then your people can't even enjoy good education or housing or better living standards. Just to, to buttress what you're saying, I hear you because, uh, you know, given their oil and their diamond wealth, you would, of course, you would uh, expect that the country would be far better off. But right now, as it stands, uh, your average Angolan lives on less than two dollars a day. That's terrible. And uh, on on the list of the on, of the world's most unequal societies, uh, it's top on that list. It's in the top ten. Uh, and then also uh, in terms of corruption, 165th out of 180 countries on the corruption watch Imagine. list. So not doing very well there. But what do you make of her claims that this is just politicking and her family is a victim of uh, President Lorenzo essentially trying to make sure that he stays in power. Elections coming up in 2022. Isabella is a smart woman and uh, she went to school in London and we've seen that so far she's tried as much as possible to control the narrative about herself and make it about her family and she's trying to play the victim. Or in an age where it's, when you play the victim it feels like you are, you are the person that is not at wrong. Right? So she's trying to do that and it doesn't make sense. Right? Your, father, your father was in power for decades. Right? You enjoyed you enjoyed privileges that was not you're not supposed to enjoy because you're the president's daughter and you've amassed a lot of wealth. And there's no way we can point to say that you started building enterprise from day one for you to have got into this level. Whatever enterprise that you've built thus far is a is a byproduct of the money that your father looted or the access that your father gave to you. So you can't tell us we're not we're not we're not stupid. Africans are not stupid. People are watching. People saw what happened in Angola. So how the oil world went away. So how the diamonds are rest of them went. So what she's saying, she's just trying to play the victim. It doesn't make sense, all right? Because for me, the interesting thing in this conversation is that we've seen across Africa, not just, even in Nigeria, where people that loot public funds when they leave office. They get this kind of immunity where nobody calls back to ask them questions. So for me, the interesting development is that in Angola, someone that his father worked that worked with his father to loot public fund is not enjoying that uh, immunity that other political office holders enjoy when they leave uh, office. It's not just Angola; it's specific across West Africa, across North Africa, across Central Africa, where people will loot money. And um, before you know it, they don't Mozambique and rest of them that somewhere in Europe, somewhere in the Middle East enjoying like how say in Nigeria flex the money that is not their own. So at the end of the day what, what Isabel is saying does not make sense even to a common man, to, to, to even to someone that didn't go to school. So she should just calm down. Uh, if at the end of the day the state in Angola finds her uh, wanting, they should prosecute her and I think that is okay. Right? Uh, the interesting thing that it sends a signal that for the first time in a long way in Angola, it might be because it might be a political uh, 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 agenda against her family. At this point, I don't care. The most important thing is that, did you loot money? Let justice be done. Did your father embezzle money? Were you part of that? She was pushed out of Sangol in 2017. If she was doing something right, nobody would have asked her to leave the gas uh, organization that, that belongs to the country. She did something wrong. So it's not just, it's not just, she's not a victim. She shouldn't make it look like she's a victim. No, she's not a victim. The people of Angola that don't have money, that are poor, that are broke, that, that don't have anything for themselves, are the victims, not her. She, she's fine. I'm going to, to cut in there because you mentioned uh, something that I think is also particularly interesting. These were allies, uh, President Lorenzo and uh, former President Dos Santos. He was handpicked by this man to become the next president of the country. Uh, and when he was speaking about, oh, you know, one of the first things I'm going to do is do away with corruption and those who were found to be guilty uh, will, will, will face the might of the law. And people just thought it was politicking and speak. Uh, but we saw it uh, in a few months ago, uh, Isabel's half-brother, Filomeno, having been taken to court. Mm -hmm. And here she is following shortly after. Mm -hmm. Is this a case of uh, an, an alliance gone sour? Or is this really uh, President Lorenzo trying to show his commitment to justice and what he said he was going to do in Angola? Okay, I will put it this way. Um, it's an alliance gone sour. That's the truth. Now, um, take Nigeria, for example. I love to use my country because I am here. And I am a lawyer here, a media practitioner here. And I know what I know. Thank God. You know, Ugo here is a political analyst too. So the truth is this, when it's a relationship and then it goes bad, the next man knows, he knows what I know. So you know what? 
I got to pinch him first before something else happens. And that's what I'm seeing here. If the Dusanchos house and, you know, the house of the incumbent president of Angola were informed, come on, nobody will be hearing of this. If anybody even tried to make noise about it, there's a chance that it would have been stopped on, you know, like everybody would just step on it and go like, numb it up, let it not come out. But at the end of the day, there are interests. It's politics. There would always be interest. Now, we do not know what the incumbent president has in mind, what he wants. But of course, hearing that Isabel wants to come out in 2022, he should be scared. And I will tell you something. A lot of Ang Angolans love Isabel. Take it from me. They love her. Okay. I'm they love her. She has the heart of the youth, and that is something that threatens him. So, and he yes. does, she does. She has the the, the media presence as well. Of social course. media. Uh, she's definitely a, a leader yes, of, she of the new age. So, I, I suppose you have a point there. Yeah. Uh, you can tell us what your thoughts are on social media. Remember, we are at New Central TV on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Use our hashtag NC the Conversation. After this, we're doing things a little bit differently. I'm going to give these guys a break. We're going to bring in two new guests, and we're getting deeper into those Luan the leaks it's an explosive report and we want to get into that tell us what your thoughts are on social media but before we do that we're going to take a short break the conversation continues after this stay with us You're welcome back to The Conversation. I am Sibusi Siwenyanda. If you're just joining us, we're still discussing that explosive story about the first daughter of, well, former first daughter of Angola, Isabel Dos Santos, and her allegations against her um, as she tries to clear her name and possibly even run for president. I'm now joined by two new guests, as I mentioned earlier, Prince Francis Chidi Chilaka, who's an executive director of programs at Kuth Foundation and a political analyst. I'm also joined by Deyemi Saka, who's part of the hashtag not too young to run generation he's also a social political influencer and a social commentator with a background in information technology remember this is a conversation with you we're on fa facebook twitter and instagram at new central tv remember to use our all important hashtag the conversation nc thank you for joining me gentlemen nice to thank you okay so let's get into the introduction about the luanda leaks if you have not been on social media it's a report that's been compiled by new york-based icij that's the international um, consortium for investigative journalists and it's a result of eight months of work and it involves over a hundred journalists its findings highlight what the ICJ the ICIJ itself has called a broken international regulatory system that allows professional services firms to serve the powerful with almost no questions and these firms include the likes of Boston uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers and Luanda Leaks found that Isabel Dos Santos aided by these advisors um, siphoned hundreds of millions of dollars outside of the country in into shell companies and from there into all kinds of assets that include luxury homes and big businesses. She insists, of course, that the allegations are unfounded. But let's see what some people in her home country have to say. Take a look. Penso que essa situação não é nova, é uma situação que já se previa e naturalmente nós, organizações da sociedade civil, intervimos para repudiar o ato que o ex-presidente da, Republic, ex da República estava a tomar. Evidentemente isso demonstrou que de facto este saque, este roubo foi uma questão organizada, orquestrada e naturalmente para o bem pessoal destes indivíduos. Esta história do Luanda Lix é uma história negativa mas também é uma lição, porque vai obrigar a todas aquelas pessoas que lidarem com fundos públicos terem cuidado e terem que respeitar aquilo que são as regras de, de boa governação. I'm going to start with uh, the big elephant in the room. She's been out of the country for over a year now. What are the odds that A, she'll be back in Angola and that she'll even see a day in court where this is, really, where this is concerned? Well, for me, I have not seen... Um, if I, let's, let me take us back. The Panama Papers yes. um, was released and nothing came out of it on mm. the African front. It's true. So this is probably the same of the same. And I, I don't think... Um, unless there's any, any country that would probably want to just um, push or lay claims to jurisdiction. I don't think that can happen. And they were so smart about it because none of these, no, nobody went um, it ventured into America or probably United Kingdom or maybe Belgium. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, for me, it's bigger than life. It's bigger than Angola. 
Because um, in 2011, Dos Santos as a president bailed out Angola and saw a lot of um, wealthy Angolans buying luxury apartments in, um, in, 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 Greece, in Portugal. So for me, it's, I don't see how that can happen. And yes, you want to look at the local politics, I don't see how they can indict her based on this. It's watertight for me, if you ask me. Mm. Okay, and then let's speak a little bit about some of the international players. We're not talking about small fish here. Price Waterhouse Coopers, McKinsey, Boston Consulting, and they've quite cleverly also already begun distancing themselves from her. What are the odds that we'll see any sort of recourse? You know, this is not the first time we've seen international players being involved um, in, in some dodgy politics in African countries and find themselves scot free. Well, you know that Africa is like um, <clears throat> is a nesting ground for a lot of these big companies that uh, believe that they can come and take as much as they want to take. Um, we're talking of Angola, but we also know that same thing is happening in other African countries. Um, we have the Malibu case in Nigeria, which mm. has not been resolved. So it's um, it's for me, it's an international syndicate that is um, applied to continuously subjugate the African nations. So they would get away with it because, as you know, you can't really pinpoint anything directly that they're involved in. But we all know that um, such a case, there must be an element of um, truth in it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come back to you because I have a question around the timing also of this. But before we, we get into that, um, how does the country, diamond rich, oil rich, and yet unequal, people live on less than a do $2 a day. Uh, how do they come out of this? How do they even begin to do that? You see, the fear about this is even if there's a repartition of such funds, the fair in the forever watcher will be would these funds be partitioned and mm. looted again? Mm. It's we've seen it in Africa across the continent and for both. If you look Boston, um, the Boston World Ivy, mean, it's a, it's an established lobbyist firm, and according to the operations and terms of operations and in in where this where they're situated, it's no crime. You see, we should be careful about um, placing this issue on moral compass. They they came up with the law. They, they perfected the act and they got away with it. Is it good for on the moral ground? No. It was it beneficial to the country. If there was a refund or return on investment to Angola as a nation, fine. But if it's not, it was a rip-off. And you should look at the key players involved because by the time Don Santos was granting the, well, such a relief package for Portugal, it wasn't just going to be about him. Mm -hmm. And Portugal, there are going to be some key players in this government, key players in Portuguese government, businessmen across two countries. And so you want to put this on the Angola front, you're pulling down backers of even the present government. You want to go to Portugal, you want to, and Portugal will only protect Angola's interest if Portugal knows they will be in custody mm. of those funds. Mm. If they, are, they will not support Angola to repatriate such funds at what expense. So it, it, it's a very, it's a dicey one for Angola as a country. If only they can guarantee the electorates that yes, we, we want to repatriate these funds to better your lives, provide infrastructure. I think the sum so far they're looking at is around one point five billion dollars. That's a huge amount of money as we speak. But for me, the is the politics involved because it, it's going to involve a lot of international players, not just bees, not just business corporations. You yeah. have political figures involved as well. It's going to be difficult for Angola to pull through, and where. And I don't think those papers will have impact in Angola courts. Yeah. That's okay. what we should look at. Local jurisdiction, local laws and what have you. Domestic laws. Okay, just speaking uh, legally, we also are required to give both sides of the story. We, of course, would not have been able to reach Ms. Dos Santos herself. But let's take a look at what she said on social media. This is a platform she herself has access to. So let's see what she had to say um, about these ICIJ reports. Some of these, uh, the commentators have also already teased too, but let's take a look. Okay, so the first one, she says, until today, two years later, Sonangol itself has never complained about any project management official consultants and they work or fees paid. Why is ICIJ trying so hard to fake proof that no PMO consultants worked in Sonangol and payments were fake? 130 consultants every day worked in Sonangol. 
another tweet there she's it's a video of a, a newly launched supermarket and she says this is what i do i build companies and enterprises i invest and create jobs this is where my wealth comes from business please watch this video we're not going to watch the video we're going to go to the last tweet here which is the icij report this is perpetrated by a political agenda to neutralize isabel dos santos information leaked by angolan intelligence services was used to manipulate the icij and to further angolan authorities political agenda already icij panama papers were disproved in a uk high court which is what you were just speaking about earlier uh, dme so there she is she's standing firm is this a woman who you believe if we're talking about her level of confidence are we looking at someone who will still continue to run for presidency in 2022 Africa is, 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 is an is, interesting place. It's an interesting place. <laughs> um, anything goes. Um, unfortunately, um, I, I was telling somebody earlier today, I said the problem we have in Africa is that corruption has taken the roots in Africa. Anything goes for money. Um, look at Angola. They've got oil, they've got diamonds. How are the people faring? And then one person has two point one billion mm. in her account what kind of work i mean she's just 46 years old what kind of work could she have done for the angolan government yeah. to even be richer than the angolan country itself and have such a large but, chunk of the country's gdp know, so so it's 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 sad but as we know um once money changes hands a lot of things are swept under the carpet. Okay, I am. My director is really <laughs> pushing me here. We unfortunately never have enough time on the conversation. But remember, it doesn't stop here. We are on social media. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Use our hashtag and use our handle at News Central TV. Thank you so much to my guests Prince <laughs> and Dayami, and also Ugo and Esther who were with us earlier. I am Sibusisi Wenyanda. This has been the conversation. It continues again later this week. Find us here same time uh, on a different day. From me, that's all we have time for. Goodbye for now.